Hello and welcome to DTWG The Prep Welcome. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be treating 20 questions. Okay, these are the no, uh, no calculator section questions where you have some basic maths, um, you have pandas, you have multiplication, you have your powers, your roots, then some word problems. Okay, so I'm going to be treating 20 questions and uh, I'm pretty sure that when you go through this 20 questions, your first five questions on your GED math test, that's the question without your calculator, you would be able to get them. Okay, and um, I also want to encourage you to also get, I have a math course to help you out. Okay, the $10, you know, one-time fee cost, you can, you know, go through it for a year, for a month, depends on your speed, okay? And it has videos, it has practice, a lot of practice after each topic, a lot of practice. And at the end of uh, you finishing your topics, it has, you know, the, the like, um, how am I going to, the practice test itself, 45 five questions that you have to go you can go through we have 15 batches so you trick you know you practice if you go through those 15 questions which are 15 uh, different 42 questions okay i'm sure that you will be able okay to go to take your test all right it is time just like the ged all right so uh, it's just definitely going to help you and on the platform you'll be able to communicate with me we uh think one the one one thing i'm offering is before your test there's a one-on-one -on -one if you purchase the course okay so i'll leave the link to the the math course that's my math course in the video description box of this video all right so please do get it it's going to really really help you to practice if you're having difficulty in getting your ged maths out of the way all right if you're having any issues with other subjects like sciences you can also contact me for tutoring i do tutoring for maths and science um, if you need summary notes study guides practice uh, free practice which i, I have uh, some on the website you can also check that dtwgdprep.com you'll find all those summary notes on your social studies you know u.s history every you know resources these are free resources on the youtube channel free resources to help you also on the website free resources to help you all right so i just needed to you know mention this before we go forward all right so now let's get on to answering these questions so here question one says what expression represent seven less than the product of 10 and a number h so they made the number h so what expression out of these options represents seven less than the product of so it will definitely be, be seven less than the product of 10 and h so 10 times h put it in a parenthesis then seven is less than whatever value is this. So that would be a minus seven. Okay, that's seven less than this. So this would be our expression and which is our right option here. Our right option is option C. So number two says, what is the greatest common factor of 12, 24, and 48? Okay, so when you see greatest common factor, you don't need to be scared. It's just simply, you find in the multiples of this number. So we have 12, 24, uh, 48. We find the factors. All right. Or you could also say multiples, but let's let's leave it as factors. So find the factors. The first factor of 12 is 1. The next factor, and a factor is a number that will, when you divide this 12 by that factor, you have no remainder. That's a factor of a particular number. So the next factor is 2. All right, another factor of 12 is three because when you divide three, you know, 12 by three, you have a whole number four without a remainder. The next factor is what four, all right? You can see this, the next factor is what six. And finally, 12 is a factor of itself, all right? Because when you do 12 divided by 12, you have one, okay? So for 24, you have one, you have two, you have three, you have four, you have six, you have eight, you have 12, and you have 24. For 48, the factor of 48 is one, two, three, four, six, eight, you have 12, you have 
16, you have 24, and you have 48. So these are the factors of these three numbers, okay? Now, what is their greatest common factor? That's the biggest common uh, factor that is common to, three, to the three numbers. You can see we have a consistent number showing up here, which is the biggest, that's eight, uh, 12, I mean. 12 is the biggest, is the greatest, all right? Uh, factor that is common to both 12, 24, and 48. So our answer is what, 12. So this is our answer, option C. Question three says, as a simplified fraction, you know, you have one over four in parentheses, five over two minus one over six equal to, what is resolve this? So we're gonna use pandas, all right? Our order of operation, all right? So we start with the parentheses, Okay, so in the parentheses, we have to resolve this fraction here. To resolve this two fraction, we have to find the least common multiple of two and six, and that will be six, okay? Because six can go here and two can go in six, okay? So we find out how many multiples of two uh, we're going to get in six. That is three, right? So we do three times five, that's 15 minus how many six can we get in six? That's one, and one times one is one. So here we have 15 minus one, that's 14 over six, okay? So we have a one over four here. Remember this one over four. So we have to multiply this, right? So that'll be one over four times 14 over six. Now two can go here, two can go here. So let's reduce, you know, this is multiplication of fraction. So we have two here, two times, two here, seven times. So we are left with, nothing else can go but from the in numerator or denominator, we can't cancel anything out. So we do one times seven, that's seven, and two times six, that's what, 12. So our answer here is option C. Question four says, what is the difference between 7.90 and 0.26? The difference means what subtraction? All right, subtraction. So we have 7.90 minus 0 0.26, okay? So remember subtraction, you know, you can't take away six from zero. So we have to borrow that one there. And that one represents a 10. When you add a 10 to zero, it becomes a 10. So we have 10 minus six, it's now a four. Remember, we borrow the one here. So we are gonna be left with eight here. So we have eight minus two, and that will give us a six point. Then seven minus zero, that's gonna give us what, seven. Okay, so our answer here is what, 7.64. So the right option here is option D. Okay, question five says, Cecil leaves one, uh, one whole number, five over eight uh, miles from his school. Which of the following decimals is equal to the distance from Cecil's home to e, to his school? Okay, so we're just what this means is just convert this fraction to what decimal. That's what it means. So you already have a whole number one. So it's going to be one point. Okay, dot decimal decimal point. So we need to know. Uh, um, we need to divide 5 over 8, okay, to get the decimal place of division of 5 over 8, okay? So this is 1, and you know in maths it's written this way. It has to be, you know, on the same level, not here. When it's, when it's in the middle, it means multiplication. So this is a decimal point. So let's divide this together. So we have 5 over 8, division, we have 5, and we'll put our 8 here, all right? Can it go in five? No, it cannot. So we have a zero point, okay? We have a decimal here. And when you have a zero point, you add a zero here, okay? And you know, this is, this teaches you division, all right? So this is when you divide like um, proper fractions, all right? So here we have, now, can it go in 50? Yes, it can. How many times can it go? It can go about six times. All right, and uh, six times eight, that will give us 48. So let's subtract this. Uh, we have to borrow a one, so this is a 10, and 10 minus eight, that will give us a two. 
all right so from here on we have to drop down a zero so you drop a zero since eight can't go into so you drop a zero here it becomes 20 and eight in 20 how many times can it go it will go two times two times 18 will give us 16 all right so when we subtract this we're going to get a four can eight go in four no you have to add a zero now can it go in 40 yes it can go and it will go five times so we have five so that will be five times eight that will give us what 40 and finally when we subtract this we get a zero so our answer here is what 0 0.625 so we have to add this to one right this is 1.00 so we have a 1.625 when we add this so our answer the conversion of this Mixed fraction to decimal is 1.625 miles. And option D is our right answer here. Now we have this. This is numbers uh, question six. It says, in which of the following are the numbers in order from least to greatest? That's from the smallest to the biggest in case you 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 know you get confused about least and greatest it's just from the smallest to the biggest okay so from here we can do elimination here you can see that from this three options the first numbers okay 0.5 this is big so um we can cancel this out this 0.5 is bigger than this bigger than this so it's from the least to what the biggest okay so we have 0.25 okay this is the list 0.25 so the first numbers are okay for option b c and d now let us look at the second um, number it's 0.5 0.5 this is 5 over 2 5 over 2 is 2 number 1 over 2 so it's bigger than 0.5 right so we eliminate this all right since after this this is not the smallest number Okay, this is like the biggest num biggest number on this line on the on the you know on the on this order of um, numbers here. So now we're left with B and C. So let's check them. All right. So here this is also correct. This is this is the after this the smallest we go here. It's like increasing from the least to what the big the greatest. Okay. So this and this is also correct. Now look at this two and five over two okay which is which is the smallest between two and five over two it is what two right because uh, this is bigger than what two five over two is two and a half so this is big uh, this is what smaller okay so we have this is smaller and finally this is what the greatest okay so our right option here is option b you can see option B says it, it brought uh, 5 over 2 first before 2. But no, 2 is smaller than 5 over 2. So it, so it should be here. Why 5 over 2 be here? So our right option here is what? Option B. So this is how you eliminate what answers. You know, there's some math questions where it's easy for you to eliminate answers. And also there's some math questions where it's easy for you to walk backwards. All right. And I'll be showing you all those as we go on. So our right option here is B. So we have question seven. It says, what is the value of X? So in this question, you can see X here has a power of two, all right? When you have something like this, either a power of three, either a power of two, what you do is you square root both sides. So you square root X squared and you square root what 49. The square root of X squared would give you an X. Okay, remember that the square root is a number where you when you multiply that number twice, it should give you x squared, right? When you multiply x twice, you get x squared. So the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of 49 is what? 7. Okay, because, you know, it is 7, you multiply it twice, that gives you 49. So the square root is what? seven okay that number all right so this is the answer x is equal to seven that's how you solve this okay if it was um, x cubed you do what you cube roots what both sides all right so the answer here is seven now here we have question eight it says simplify the following problem 
Okay, here we have rational numbers. So when you have something like this 75 over 72, what it means also is the square root of 75 over the square root of 72. Okay, this statement means the same. Okay, we are breaking it down so we can break them individually. All right, so in breaking down a rational number, always look for a way you can find a perfect square out of it. Okay, and one way to do it is by saying, you first start by doing maybe 75, uh, can't be divided by two, can it be divided by a three? Yes, without a remainder. If you do 75 divided by three, you should get a two and a five, a 25. And you can see 25 is a perfect square. So this is a good number to you. So we have 25 times three, okay, which would give you 75. Now for here, our denominator 72. So let's look for a perfect square. We start from the least, let's say two, uh, 72 divided by two, we should get uh, two in this is three, the remainder one, then 36. So we see we have a 36, which is a perfect square. So we have 36 times two, which would also give you 72. So from here, this statement also means the square root of 25 times the square root of three. Also here, this means the square root of 36 times the square root of two. Here now we can get the square root of 25, which is what five, okay, times the square root of three. And here the square root of 36 is what six times the square root of two. Finally, we have this five times the square root of three is five, five root three. You don't do five times three and you have 15, uh, 15. no, no, you don't do that, okay? It just multi stays outside the, what, the square here. And here we have six root two, all right? So this is our final answer. So five root three over six root two. And our right option here is option A. Question nine says, which of the following is the number this written in scientific notation. Now, this is a standard form. So you uh, must be able to know how to convert standard form to scientific notation and backwards also, scientific notation to standard form, okay? Please, um, you can just, you know, see these questions randomly alone as a standalone like this, or sometimes it will be, maybe after solving a word problem, they'll say, um, the question will say, give your answer in scientific notation. Okay, so please do um, have an understanding of this. So to convert this to scientific notation, okay, it's all about, you know, having the powers of 10. So we have to move this decimal place, one, two. Always make the decimal point stop at this um, uh, after the first digit, okay? So we move two times. So when we move two times, that means we have moved 10 raised to power two, okay? We moved two times and it's in a positive, you know, this number, first of all, is in the positive zone, okay? If it was something like 0 0.3 uh, and we were to move this way, then we are moving in the negative zone, okay? It's like, um, how am I gonna put it down? We're moving by 10, all right? Each decimal point we cross is by 10, all right? Another one we cross another 10. It's like we are multiplying by 10, okay? If you multiply, if we do 3.1672 now, times 10 raised to the power 10, which is 100, you would see we would get one, two, we would get 3.1, uh, sorry, we'll get 316.72, okay? So we have to move two times and our power would be what positive, that's raised to the power of two. So our right option here is option B. And when, you, when you're moving to your right, your power would be in the negative. All right, so moving to your left, your power would be the positive. So our right option here is option B. Question 10 says, 
which absolute value expression illustrates the distance between point A and point B on the following number line? So this is point A, this is point B. We must get the values, okay? If we see here from zero, the distance between two points are in threes. So if this is three, it means this would be six, right? So we have here, this is minus three, minus is like an addition of six, minus of three, I mean, minus six, minus nine. So it means this, if we add three to nine, we have a negative what? 12, okay? So A is a negative 12, B is what? Six, okay? The distance from here, from B to, to um, the zero value is six. And the distance from A to the zero value is what? Is 12. In maths, there's, not, um, there's nothing like a negative distance, okay? In maths, we don't have negative distance is what? 12. Even if on your number line, it shows negative. When they say distance, distance can never be what? Negative. Okay, it's like you traveling backwards and you say, you traveled negative, let's say 42 kilometers, you know, backwards. No, distance is always what? Positive, negative, uh, positive um, 42 kilometers or miles, okay? So our value has to be 12 plus six, which would be 18. So we should have the positive value. Now, which is correct in this option? Now, remember that the, when you do an absolute value of a number if the number is negative the absolute value value of a negative 18 is what a positive what 18 okay so if we do this this is 12 minus 6 that will give us 6 this is wrong this is 6 minus this is a negative 6 is, it was wrong we should be getting something like 18 this is negative 12 plus 6 that's this is a negative 6 also wrong so this is a negative 12 negative 6 this is what a negative 18 in absolute value and which will give us what a positive 18 so our right option here is option c question 11 says pluto is this okay this is uh 5.9 billion uh 5.5 uh, 1914 billion kilometers, 5 billion, 914 million kilometers from the sun. This distance can be written in scientific notation as, okay, remember scientific notation, we, from here, we move our decimal points and count until we get to this word, last digit, before, after the last digit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that would be a 5.914 uh, times 10 raised to power nine because we moved nine times. So our right answer here is option B. Question 12 says, what is the value of five cube minus four square? Okay, the value of five cube is five times five times five minus four square is what four times four five times five is 25 and 25 times five will get 125 okay hope you know how to do multiplication you know this is a non-calculator section so that's five carry one or carry two i mean and five times two is 10 plus two that will give us 12 that's how we got 125 minus four times four is 16. And 125 minus 16, we are going to get 109. So our right option here is option C. Question 13 says, what is the value of 3 square minus the cube root of 216? So 3 square is 3 times 3 minus the cube root of 16. It's always good before you go into, you know, to do your, your math test that you know some um, maybe the first, at least the first 10 square roots and also the first 10 cube roots. Okay, so the cube root of 216 is what? 6. Okay, and that is 6 times 6 times 6. Or if you forget, you don't know it, you can always test it. Start with the smaller numbers. Like what is 3 times 3 times 3? Three? 3 times 3 is 9 times 
3 again is 27. You can try 4. 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 times 4 is 64. You can try 5. 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5, we just did that. Uh, that's uh, 25 times 5 is 125. You can try 6, which is here. 6 times 6 is 36. Let's do 36 times 6. And 6 times 6, 36, carry 3. And 6 times this, that will give us what? 18. And 18 plus 3 will give us 216. You see, the cube root of 216 is what? 6. Now, this is 3 times 3, which is what? 9. So we have 9 minus 6, which will give us what? 3. So our right answer here is option B. Now, we have here a division questions, question. It says divide this by 70. Let's do this together. So we have 3, 1, 5, and we have 70. Okay, so here we do, um, first of all, um for you for you know to make it easy for you you might not you know um on top of your of your head say no what how many times 70 would go in 315 you can start with seven all right for numbers like this that have a zero you will start with seven how many sevens can we get we can't get seven a seven in three or how many sevens can we get in 31 we can get what four sevens right that's you know, that's 4 times 7 is 28. So it means we are going to definitely get 4 70s in 315. So when we do 4 times 70, you're going to see how it works. 4 times 70 is what? 280. 228. You can see that's close. If you add 70 to this 280, it's going to be greater than 315. So we are correct. We have 4 70s in 315. So we subtract here, we now have uh, 5 minus this, that's 5. Then we can subtract 8 from 11. So we have to go with 1 here. From 1, I mean, we go with 1 here, it's 11. 11 minus 8, we have what? 3, right? So can 70 go in 35? No. So we do what? We add a decimal point, okay? So this is the first, you know, uh, we've done a division earlier on. So when you do, can 70 go in 35? No, you add the first decimal point. And from there on, then on, you can always add your zeros after any number that whichever uh, with the, the, the dividend can't go, 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 go with, okay? So here, so when we add this decimal point, we add a zero. Now, can 70 go in 350? Yes, it can go. It can go how many times? Five times. So we have five times 70. It's going to give us 350. So our answer here is what? 4.5. So question 15 says, multiply this by this. So we have 0 0.371 times 7.8. Okay? So first of all just forget about the decimal point just multiply like numbers first of all so we do eight times one that is eight eight times seven we have 56 so we drop the six and carry a five eight times three is um 24 and 24 plus this five will give us what 24 plus five that will give us 29 so we write that in nine we carry two we do 8 times 0, that is 0, plus this 2 that we've carried is a 2. Next, we do 7 times 1, we drop it down here, we don't drop it here, we drop it down here. 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 7 is 49, so we write a 9, we carry a 4. 7 times 3 is 21, 21 plus 4 is 25, so we write a 5 and carry a 2. Then 7 times 0 is 0, plus this 2 we've carried, we have 2. So we add here, we have 8, this plus this is 13, we drop 3, carry 1, add 1 to this, it becomes 10, 10 plus 9 is what, 19, write 9, carry 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 5 is what, 8, and we have just 2 here, we drop 2. 
Now it's time for us to count our decimal places. So we have one, two, three, four. So we're going to move four times. One, two, three, and four. And our final answer is 2.8938. Can you see that? To get your decimal, uh, how many decimal places we're going to count, okay? It's, you count the numbers to your right after each decimal point, okay? So we have one number here. Here we have three numbers. So three plus the one number here, that's four. That's why we moved four times, okay? So this is our answer. Question six says, what is the value of 4x plus 2 if x is minus 2? So all you need to do is wherever x is in this expression, put it as minus 2. So we have 4x plus 2. x is here, so we have 4 in parentheses, minus 2 plus 2. 4 times minus 2, you know this is the parentheses, so we multiply, we open up the parentheses, the bracket. 4 times minus 2 is a minus 8 plus 2. Now, when you have the minus 8 plus 2, when you have a negative and a positive integer, okay, what you do is you subtract and you get 6. And the sign of 6 will take the sign of the bigger number, which is what negative. So our answer is a negative 6, which is C. Question 17 says, what is the value of this? We have 25. We have to use pandas, okay, which is parentheses first. So let's deal with the parentheses. In the parentheses, we have 5 minus 3, which is 2, square divided by 2. After parentheses, your exponent. So this is an exponent here. So we have 25 minus 2 square. That's 2 times 2. That will be 4. So we have 4 divided by 2. After the parentheses, we have multiplication. There's no multiplication here. The next, we have division. There's a division here. So we divide 4 divided by 2. We give us 2. So we have minus 25. So next thing, we can just subtract. 25 minus 2, we give us 23. So option C. Okay. So question 18 says, what is the value of this? Okay, so we have to apply pandas here. Since we have different, so many operations, we have to apply pandas, okay? So here, is there any parenthesis? No. Is there an exponent in this expression? No. Multiplication? Yes, we have. So we have to multiply this first. You see, that's why the order of operation helps us. You know, if there was no other operation, someone else would do this. Another person would do 2 minus 4. And you see you have different answers you have a wrong answer that's why order of operation following it is very important okay so we have 10 plus 12 divided by 3 times 2 is 6 then minus 4 the next operation is division we have division here so we divide so we have 10 plus 6 divided by 12 divided by 6 is a 2 then minus 4 the next operation is addition so we do 2 10 plus 2, that will give us a 12. Then we have a minus 4, 12 minus 4. That's the final operation subtraction. We get 8. Our answer here is option 8. That's B, I mean. So here we have question 19. It says add this, okay? So you can see this is rational numbers. So when you have something like this and you just have a rational number like this, okay, there's an invisible one in front of this okay and when you are adding rational numbers you you can only add these two because they have the same irrational what um square root this is square root seven this is square root seven that's when you can add like their coefficients the numbers in front of them so to add this we are going to have four plus one which is what five and you leave the irrational number the same which is what seven you don't add the two irrational numbers, no, or you don't multiply them. You leave it what as the same. That is what seven. Okay, it's like the variables, like in uh, you know algebra, where you have four x plus x. Okay, and you get what five x. All right, the square root, the square root seven. The rational numbers remain as the rational number. Okay, and our answer here is option B. Finally. 
In our no calculator section question, we have this question here. It says, traveling at an average speed of 66 miles per hour, John drives 165 miles. Three hours later, John takes the return trip at the same speed. How much total time elapses between John's original departure and final return? So the total time that elapsed the total time that elapsed between John's original departure and final return. Okay, so it means we must add the time for the first travel. Then these are three hours he spent. Then the return trip. Okay, so the time for the first travel is says um, sixty-six miles per hour, and he drove once he drove one sixty-five miles. So the time. For 160, you know, this is the rate per hour, 66 miles per hour. To know how many miles, are, how many hours he drove 165, 165 miles is 165 divided by 66, and which will give us a 2.5 watt hours. All right, so that's the first journey, 2.5 hours, then plus the three hours later then plus the return trip, which he made at the same speed, okay? And the same, what, uh, at the same speed, okay? So, which is also 165 divided by 66, okay? Which is what, 2.5. And when we add this up, we are going to get what, 8. Because 2.5 plus 3, that's 5.5. Then plus 2.5, we get what? 8 what hours. Our right option here is option D. Okay, so thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video. Thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe to this channel and um, like this video, share this video with your friends, family, and loved ones. And also, please, um, you can check the website for various resources. And finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ. For he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He's the one who's going to lead us to heaven at last and also give us this heaven on earth here. Okay, so please turn your hearts towards him and you know, leave every um, wrong way you've been into in the past and he would give you rest and peace. Okay, and joy and love and prosperity. He's going to do that for you. And success in your life to move forward, okay, without struggling, without sorrows, okay, and take care of everything that pertains to you. That's what he would do. Allow him into your life today and he would give you the best. Thank you and see you in our next video.